Hi, today we're going to work with some vignettes, and you probably already know what a vignette is. That's when there's a, uh, a shape uh, surrounding the uh, subject of a photograph or, a, or an illustration, and uh, it normally fades from full color of the illustration to white or whatever color uh, the background is. And uh, in Corel Draw, we do have a vignette tool. Um, up here under bitmaps. I don't always show my tools but today I am because we're going to use a lot of different tools. Under bitmaps I can go to this uh, creative down here and you will see your vignette. And if I pick that I'll get a menu and I, I can pick the shape of my vignette. I have four choices and I can adjust the amount of, of vignette fade and the amount of offset which is the shape of the vignette but I'll just leave it at the default and we'll see what we get here and that's a vignette and this might work for uh, whatever you're doing um, sometimes I think uh, one of the drawbacks of, of learning graphics on a computer even though it's an incredibly powerful tool is I think a lot of people tend to feel like they're limited by the limitations of the tools that uh, come with the program. What if I wanted to do something a little bit more creative than this vignette? Maybe I'd like to do a different shape vignette, such as how about a, a heart? These two ducks uh, love each other, so we could probably give them a nice heart-shaped vignette, and that would be, that would be cool. Um, I'll turn this transparent, and you can see that um, it's actually a good choice for this because their heads kind of fit in there just right. So let's go with that um, for our vignette. Um, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my heart and I'm going to draw an, a uh, square, just a square about that big. I'll make it a different color so I can see what I'm doing and I'll send it down one, uh, one uh, position. And then if I select my heart and hold down shift and select my square, I'll come up here to combine and that gets rid of the red and now I have a nice little window that I can see my ducks through. My next step is I'm going to change this square to a 50% black so it's half half white half black it's a gray and then I'll change this or I'll convert this to a grayscale bitmap it's just for a video so I'm going to use 135 dpi you'd normally go a little higher if it's for printing if it's for the internet a uh, low resolution should be fine and I want it to have a transparent background of course it already has one um, now that this is a bitmap, it's not a vector anymore, I can go up to bitmaps and I don't have to uh, leave Corel Draw to work with uh, bitmap in this way. Blur, right here, Gaussian Blur. And that'll bring up my Gaussian Blur menu and I can uh, adjust the radius or the amount of blur. It's going to blur this gray. I'll show you what it looks like. And as you can see, let me move this out of here, it gives a, a nice vignette style look. I can increase the, the amount of blur, I can decrease it. Um, for now, I'm going to leave it just like it is, so OK. And now if I go to bitmaps again, here's a feature I use a lot, mode, black and white. This will change it to a one bit bitmap. I want to select line art here. move that over there, the threshold, just to make sure it catches. And I'll preview it, and that looks good. And that changes it to a one bit, which means it's two different colors. The pixel is either going to be white or black, or whatever color I want it to be. And the color I want it to be is clear in the middle. So I'm going to click no fill with my left mouse button on my color palette. That gets rid of my fill. 
And then I'll just change the blue to white here. And there's a vignette. And you can sort of see the original back here. But we'll just crop that in. Just like that with my shape tool. And if this is going to be for printing, you can just leave it the way it is. This will print just fine. But what if I want to use it as part of another graphic? For instance, maybe I'd like to make a cute t-shirt out of this. And I want to be able to show a customer what the design might look like on a t-shirt. So I want to do this and as you can see that's not very realistic because you can see the white and uh, there's not much I can do about that because it's white. So if we're going to use the vignette for this purpose we're going to do it a little bit differently so let's try that. I'll go back to my original JPEG um, and now we're going to create a vignette in a different manner that's going to give us a transparent background. Um, to do that we're going to have to use Corel Photo Paint and uh, what I like about Photo Paint is it's connected with Corel Draw so it works simultaneously and I may have mentioned before you can switch back and forth between the two programs flawlessly. It, it won't change the uh, size or the position of your bitmap so it's, it's very convenient to use both programs together. Um, before I go to Photo Paint, I want to do one thing. I'm going to convert this bitmap. It's a JPEG to a bitmap with a transparent background. A JPEG doesn't have a transparent background, so anything your customer finds on the internet or sends you that's a JPEG, you're going to have to do this. A ping, I don't know if I say ping properly, a PNG, Portable Network Graphics File, may or may not have a transparent background, but it doesn't hurt to just convert it doesn't change the look of it. Anyway, now we have a transparent background and you'll see why that's important in a minute. If I go up here to Edit Bitmap, that'll take me into Corel Photo Paint. And here we are. I'll get this in view here. Zoom out a little bit. And uh, now, as I said, I can go back to Draw whenever I want. This is draw. I'll paste my heart down again. And uh, I'm going to turn the heart green, and you'll see why I'm doing that in a moment. Then I'm just going to copy it to my clipboard. Go back to Photo Paint. I'm going to paste it, and that's going to put it on its own separate layer, and it's going to convert it from a vector object to a raster. We'll keep it at the same resolution and we will click this box here, maintain original size and that should paste it exactly where it belongs at the right size. So now we have two layers, one of them's the heart and one of them is the ducks. I'll go to the heart layer and I'm going to go up here to, to mask, create Create mask from object. Now that's why I turned it green because my mask, the default for the mask is going to be red. So this makes it easy to see what I've done. Now I have a mask for my ducks, and that's how I want them to look. And if I want, I can put, I can move one or the other layers to get them exactly where I want. Um, I might do that here. Yeah, about there. And now my mask is masking the wrong part of my of my image. Um, this is how I want it to look when it's done, but the part I want to get rid of is the part that's masked. So all I need to do is go invert, and now the mask is masking the correct part of the image, the duck's heads. Okay. Go back to mask again, and this time I'll go to mask outline, feather, this top one here. And as you might imagine, that gives it a blurry look. And I can 
choose what kind of feather I want. I can go out inside, outside, middle. This is average. That means it takes the pixels right on the edge of the mask and uh, blurs it that way. And I can also do the amount of feather. And it looks about right here. So I think I'll move this one more time. And now all I have to do is click um, cut. You could try delete, but sometimes delete will get rid of your whole thing. Cut is safer. You can always click back, undo. But cut always works. That just cuts my background away, and these red and yellow uh, checkerboards kind of show us that this area is transparent. Now I can get rid of my other object just with a I'm over here on my object menu you can't see it it's off screen but I'm just gonna delete that layer and now I'm done I'm gonna click close and I don't have to save it I mean I do have to save it but it'll ask me if I want to save it if I click yes then it goes right back to draw and here's my vignette and if I send this heart down one you can see that it has a transparent background and once again we'll need to crop it in here now we can bring our t-shirt and our design back and zoom out a bit. Now we'll just go ahead and assemble this just like this and bring these guys in here get it just the way you want and that looks pretty realistic except for this part here the designs in front of her hair so let's take it back one step so her hair doesn't go over it and that looks better so just just uh, send it back behind the hair okay I'll show you how I did it I made a little cheat patch here to cover that front part up maybe I'll do another video about that later but anyway now I can show this to my customer it looks fairly realistic good representation of how the prints going to look I have a vignette with a clear background so that's two ways to do a vignette and I hope your next project goes well.